You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Evil from Beyond has come to the museum. Throughout the museum's histories, visitors have been drawn to its unparalleled collection of ancient exhibits and exotic curios from faraway places. But in 1926, unimaginable horrors from beyond threatened to use these artifacts as means to enter our world, bring an end to all of humanity. The clock is striking midnight and a small group of courageous investigators desperately search the marbled halls for the legendary symbol that will keep our world safe, the Elder Sign. Welcome to Tabletop Arcane. I am Justin, and I am bringing you a review today on Elder Sign, the dice game based on H.P. Lovecraft's works on the Arkham Universe. This was designed by Richard Linius and Kevin Wilson, put out by Fantasy Flight Games. Plays one to eight players, and plays in about one to two hours per the box. MSRP is $34.95. So we are going to talk about Elder Sign. The actual board game slash dice game slash card game and not the Elder Sign Omens, which is the digital app. But the digital app was spun off this game and it did inspire three expansions to the real game based on how it worked. So they kind of played off each other. It was really neat to see that as it came out. But we're going to take a comprehensive look, top to bottom Elder Sign with the expansions, without the expansions, and kind of give you some feedback on those. So first impressions on Elder Sign is... Well, it's a lot smaller than everything else in Arkham Horror. You still have your up to eight player count. You still have Lovecraftian monsters. You still have a lot of the same investigators that you see in Arkham Horror 2nd Edition and the rest of the Arkham Files universe. So it's familiar territory, but now you've got custom dice and tarot cards that show locations within the museum with flavor text and things going on. Try to figure out what's going on and collect Elder Signs so that you can win the game before the Ancient One awakens. They have several expansions out for this game. At this point, it is kind of completed an end game, so I don't expect anything more from there unless it's built by the fan community. There are five main expansions, all at $24.95, and one micro expansion at $12.95. The first two were Unseen Forces, then Gates of Arkham, then with the success of the app and digital version of Elder Sign Omens, Omens of Ice, Omens of the Deep, and Omens of the Pharaoh were also released, which emulate more of a little story arc campaign, gets you out of the museum, and gets you playing in an expedition to Antarctica, Relay, or to the pyramids themselves, which are all features in the Omens games, which was a little bit easier to do in digital, and then they found a way to make it work in the physical game. So let's talk about things that Elder Sign does well. One thing is it captures everything that Arkham Horror is in a much smaller box and much less imposing price point as well. At $35, you get quite a bit of game out of this. You have a bunch of investigators to start with, several ancient ones, and then a decent deck of cards, which are your mission cards and your objectives to complete in there and essentially you'll have six of those available to you at any given point with potentially a seventh one being a other world encounter if a magical portal can open up and you essentially go to these little places and you check your dice and you roll your dice and you'll see if you can get the right successes You can use items and other equipment you've acquired to get you extra dice, but ultimately you're rolling six dice that are all the same. And each time you do not complete a task that's listed on the card by assigning dice to it, you have to lose a die and then you can re-roll. So you essentially only have a few attempts with a smaller and smaller dice pool trying to get this. Now each character has their own little special abilities, some of them allow you to re-roll or convert dice from one symbol to a different symbol, and then there's also some bad stuff that can happen depending on what the card is. There's a lot of tactics on when to re-roll, what to re-roll, and who to bring or what to bring to an encounter card. With all that being said, Elder Sign does a lot of fun stuff with that dice manipulation. They do a lot of interesting things, especially when you start getting into the expansions of emulating kind of a Omens of Ice, Omens of the Deep, and Omens of the Pharaoh, because you actually get story and kind of an objective to go towards than just grabbing Elder Signs. The core game on itself is really just getting yourself powered up with items and other things so that you can go after the bigger, tougher cards that actually award you the Elder Signs 
but at the same time you also have a kind of reverse of every fourth turn no matter the number of players so in a solo game you get four turns and then the clock will strike midnight and like an eight player game you won't even have your first turn before the clock strikes midnight if you're in the second half of that eight player group that being said that's when the board kind of gets its do things some bad effects might happen that say at midnight and a lot of other nastiness can occur in there it doesn't necessarily feel like the game takes much of a turn some monsters might appear there might be a little bit of just the doom clock of the threat track moving up sort of thing there are some monsters there are some other effects that will might be on cards that could cause that bit of terror and this gets addressed a little bit better with some of the expansions but in the core game experience it's just kind of a timekeeper and a doom clock for you other things that Elder Sign does well is it keeps the theme of Arkham going with a lot of the elements, but the narrative falls off a little bit unless you're reading all the little scribble text on all, every single card because all it is is a card game now and you're not really getting like an encounter card like you would in Arkham 2nd Edition. So it's a little bit on a strip down on the narrative side and it's more of a dice chucker game in that sense. If you like dice chucker games, this is one I would possibly push on you at that point. So let's talk about some of those expansions and some of the things that they did well. Unseen Forces added white die and black die to the mix of dice available. The other big thing is it changed up the entrance cards from one solo museum entrance to four different versions, which can open and close. Kind of give a little bit more variety in there. The black die was usually a bad thing and it's a cursed die and the white die was a bonus die. It would be almost like a seventh green die for you if you can earn that. So they kind of added some of those blessed and cursed mechanics to it, some elder ones to it, and added eight more investigators to the game. So it was a lot more of what you already got with a little bit of extra flavoring. There wasn't much to the expansion other than like, hey, these are nice things that kind of were already in second edition that kind of got stripped out of Elder Sign and they're now put back in. The first one that really changed Elder Sign around was Gates of Arkham, which actually changed the adventure cards up. Because now you're not in the museum anymore, you're out on the streets of Arkham and you have multiple gates opening up which gave you more other world options. They added some skill cards and other things, event cards and membership cards that you can earn in the game and that was kind of a fun aspect. One other thing that I really did enjoy specifically about Gates of Arkham is the adventure cards. Some of them would be face down and they would have a green, yellow, or red kind of stoplight colors on there to give you an indication if it was an easy, normal, or hard one but you couldn't necessarily see what you were getting yourself into. It was kind of nice in that suspense, like, hey, that's easy. I don't have a lot of stuff on that right now. I should probably go on that, or we should probably do the hard one. I need some bigger rewards. Now, the Omens of Ice, Omens of the Pharaoh, and Omens of the Deep expansions were very much campaign -y based. So they have their own tracks, their own things that you're trying to do, scenario cards that you're trying to play through, and kind of have their own adventure deck. So they replaced a lot of the components and gave you kind of a narrative feel to the game, which was very nice to have, depending on what theme you went with. All of them are good, it just depends on which one calls out to you most. They all did add extra investigators and ancient ones, which then could be mixed into the rest game. Same thing with a lot of the item cards. But as far as the adventure cards, those were kind of tied to each one individually. So kind of a good and bad thing there. And then finally, the micro expansion was kind of put out at the end as a print on demand. This is Grave Consequences. Added some epic battle cards and phobia cards and empath cards which were just kind of different options that you could play with the game. The Epic Battle cards I never really enjoyed, but I never really played those with the Arkham Horror 2nd Edition Epic Battles either, so that is a part of it. The Empath cards and the Phobia cards were pretty much if you went insane, you would not necessarily go and be devoured. You would get a Phobia card, restored back to health, and then you could keep playing, but with a negative penalty. It was something that was introduced in the Arkham Horror 2nd Edition, so Richard Linus had wrote some custom rules and brought that into Elder Sign as well. So that's all kind of the good stuff about Elder Sign. Some of the opportunities of Elder Sign is definitely the speed of play, especially when you're over four players. The game really drags, and there's not much you do in between turns, and turns can take a little bit of time because you're rolling dice, you're assigning dice, you're re-rolling them, you're dropping dice. Like a single turn can actually take several minutes if you're doing it, and then all of a sudden it's 30 minutes, 40 minutes before you have another turn on it like an eight-player game. It's just not that fun in that sense. I do say Elder Sign, while it can support eight players, probably should not be used at eight players unless people are okay sitting around waiting for other people to go and kind of sideline cheerleading 
The other thing is, because it lost a lot of its narrative, especially in the core game in the first one or two expansions, it wasn't until the omens took off that there actually was more of a narrative other than there's an ancient one, you're in the museum, accomplish things, and try to beat the clock. Some people who played Arkham Horror were looking for a little bit more to it. The table space is much better, and there's a lot of perks to Elder Sign, but for almost only shaving maybe an hour or two off of gameplay, if you're lucky, you're getting a lot watered down version of the full board game. That is the other thing I will call out is the time it takes to play Elder Sign, especially if you're mixing some of the expansions. One to two hours is relatively not accurate. You can lose in one to two hours, but to actually pull off a victory tends to be another two to three hours at that point. It's one of those important factors to make sure you take note of when you're playing the game. Outside of the box is probably recommending like four players who know what they're doing one to two hours might actually be a realistic number there unless everything goes sideways which it usually does in Arkham games kind of hinted at it when I was talking about the expansions before the downside to the omens ones is because you're only playing those scenarios there's not a lot in each of them that gets mixed and matched Gates of Arkham is probably my favorite of them all because it does allow you to do a little bit more in and out. Unseen Forces really just enhances the base game only but doesn't really do too much more to it. If I had to recommend a single expansion, I would probably go for Gates and then maybe Unseen Forces if you just want to reinforce what you already have or then go for the Omens if there's something else. Grave Consequences is something I would pick up at the end if you had just have the collection and you want to finish it off. That being said, there's a lot of options when you have everything. You can smash it all in a single box, but it takes a lot of packing to put all of these things in a single box of Elder Sign. They did kind of get to the point where if you need everything and if you don't sleeve it, you can squeeze it in there, but it's tight. So some storage, storage solution will eventually be needed, mostly because the original box is kind of that flippy cardboard spacer void fill that doesn't really do you any good. With the opportunities of Elder Sign, if you are really big into Arkham and you want to roll dice and, and just slim down the process of Elder Sign into, I'm just rolling dice to make sure I make my checks, you can get a lot of entertainment out of this. I have gotten a lot of entertainment out of this, but I would technically, if I was given the choice, would probably play the board game over Elder Sign each time. Unless I had just played the board game like 30 minutes ago, then maybe I would play Elder Sign after that. Overall, I would personally actually recommend the digital version of Elder Sign because it really does make Arkham Horror feel like it's an on-the-go game, and they did an amazing job with that. If you're a analog-only sort of player, then definitely pick up the physical version. If you're on the fence, I would prefer the digital. It takes a lot of the mechanics and streamlines your gameplay quite a bit because one to two hours is not what you play on your phone. You can actually get in and out of those games relatively fast since it takes care of all of your mitigation of tokens. MSRP is $34.95. I believe that's actually a pretty fair price for the amount of cardboard chits and dice and stuff that you get in the box. It's actually a smaller box game, so it actually has an appropriate price point on it. Expansions are a little bit expensive, but because you're getting a lot of cards in each of them, they do really do expand the game. The only one that does not really do that is Grave Consequences, but that again is $12.95. It's just a little bit of what are you getting out of that, if it's worth it to you. That is the Tabletop Arcanum's review of Elder Sign from Fantasy Flight Games. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you follow us on our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you hit those like, comment, and subscribe buttons. Get those notifications set up so that you can find out when we're releasing new content. As always, thank you for listening, and happy gaming. to Tabletop Arcanum, produced by Justin Taylor. This episode is hosted by Justin Taylor. Mixing and editing by Richard Geese. Original theme by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. Check the description for this episode's featured background music. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and leave us a review if you would. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.